Hello and welcome back GenBio students. This is Mr. Hollins and we are on chapter 3 and I'm presenting to you 3.2. 3.2 is about energy, producers, and consumers. Consumers. And you can create an outline for this section uh, on paper uh, or you can ask me and I can give you one. Nonetheless, you should be able to organize your reading and take notes. Take notes for this chapter, section 3.2. This is, watch this, we're going to write, make sure that you get it this time, section 3.2. Okay? Biology. Biology. Okay. Let's take a look at the textbook lesson overview. Energy producers and consumers. Think about it. At the core of every organism's interaction with its environment is its need for energy to power life's processes. So where do we get our energy? I know we like to eat, and that gives us some energy in the morning. But where does energy in living systems come from? And how is it transferred from one organism to the other? Uh, what are primary producers? Uh, this is one of the questions, one of the key questions in your book, what are primary producers? Well, primary producers are the first producers of energy-rich compounds that are later used by other organisms. So they are producing compounds, which we usually call food, but the food we eat are made of compounds, many large molecules that get broken down, and when they break down, it releases energy. This is the energy we're talking about. Organisms need energy for growth, reproduction, and metabolic processes. When we talk about metabolic processes, we're referring to um, using our muscles, uh, using our brain to think, and using our heart to beat. No organisms can create energy. Organisms can only use energy from other sources. So remember that, folks. We, we cannot create our own energy. It would be nice if we could, but we cannot. Primary producers. For most life on Earth, sunlight is the ultimate energy source. For some organisms, however, chemical energy stored in inorganic chemical compounds serves as the ultimate energy source for life processes. And you can see in this lower left-hand picture, it looks like some kind of smoke or something. It's pretty strange, but uh, this, this area right down in here, this is uh, underwater. Under the sea, there are sea vents. And there are bacteria that live near these sea vents, and they use sulfur instead of oxygen. We have to use oxygen. Plants, algae, and certain bacteria can capture energy from sunlight or chemicals and convert it to, into forms that living cells can use. These or organisms are called autotrophs. And auto, the autotroph, the auto and autotroph, it sounds like uh, automatic. And troph stands for food, so automatic food. It would be nice if that happened for us. Autotroph. Autotroph. Say it again. Autotroph. Organism that is able to capture energy from sunlight or chemicals and use it to produce its own food from inorganic compounds. Also called a producer. So we call it a producer because it can produce those chemical compounds that we like to use. Autotrophs are also called primary producers. Primary producers store energy in forms that make it available to other organisms that eat them and are therefore essential to the flow of energy through the biosphere. You learned about the biosphere in last section 3.1. For example, plants obtain energy from sunlight and turn it into nutrients that can be eaten and used for energy by animals such as this caterpillar. The best known and most common primary producers harness solar energy through the process of photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process, and this process uses carbon dioxide and water in the presence of light energy to produce carbohydrates plus oxygen. So the carbohydrates are the things we like to use for our energy. We eat them. We eat carbohydrates. So I'm going to ask you to repeat this photosynthesis definition in the terms of this 
little diagram right here. Photosynthesis captures light energy and uses it to power chemical reactions that convert carbon dioxide and water into oxygen and energy-rich carbohydrates. This process adds oxygen to the atmosphere and removes carbon dioxide. That certainly sounds like a good thing. Plants are the main photosynthetic producers on land. Algae fill that role in freshwater ecosystems and the sunlit upper ocean. Photosynthetic bacteria, most commonly called cyanobacteria, are important primary producers in tidal flats and salt marshes. Biologists have discovered thriving ecosystems around volcanic vents in total darkness and on the deep ocean floor. Deep sea ecosystems depend on primary producers that harness chemical energy from inorganic molecules such as hydrogen sulfide. And this is considered life without light. So they don't have light, they don't have sunlight, they have to use other things such as these inorganic molecules. The use of chemical energy to produce carbohydrates is called chemosynthesis. And this is a little bit different than photosynthesis. How do consumers obtain energy and nutrients? Uh, consumers, organisms that rely on other organisms for energy and nutrients are called consumers. We are consumers. We depend on plants to provide energy and other animals to provide our energy. Organisms that must acquire energy from other organisms by ingesting in some way are known as heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are also called consumers. This parrot here in this picture is eating some plants and that is considered a heterotroph. Different types of consumers. Consumers are classified by the ways in which they acquire energy and nutrients. Carnivores kill and eat other animals and include snakes, dogs, cats, and this giant river otter in the picture. Catching and killing prey can be difficult and requires energy, but meat is rich in nutrients and energy and is easy to digest. Scavengers, like this king vulture, are animals that consume the carcasses of other animals that have been killed by predators or have died of other causes. Decomposers, such as bacteria and fungi, like this mushroom, feed by chemically breaking down organic matter. The decay caused by decomposers is part of the process that produced detritus, small pieces of dead and decaying plant and animal remains. Types of consumers. One type of consumer is herbivores, like this military macaw obtaining energy and nutrients by eating plant leaves, roots, seeds, or fruits. Common herbivores include cows, caterpillars, and deer. Omnivores are animals whose diets naturally include a variety of different foods that usually include both plants and animals. Humans, bears, pigs, and this white-nosed kawati are omnivores. Can you say kawati? That's what's in this picture here. And then we have detritivores, detritivores. Like this giant earthworm, feed on detritus particles often chewing or grinding them into smaller pieces. Detritivores commonly digest de decomposers that live on and in detritus particles. Beyond consumer categories, well, categorizing consumers is important, but these simple categories often don't express the real complexity of nature. For example, herbivores that eat different plant parts often differ greatly in the ways they obtain and digest their food. So similarly, caterpillars and this macaw, they are different, yet they are both considered herbivores. And finally, in addition, organisms in nature often do not stay inside the categories we put them in. For example, some carnivores will scavenge even if they get the chance. Many aquatic animals eat a mixture of algae, bits of animal carcasses, and detritus particles. It's important to expand upon consumer categories by discussing the ways that energy and nutrients move through ecosystems. And this has been a lesson overview for energy producers and consumers, section 3.2 in your book. So go ahead and read that section now and see if what I haven't said matches what you read. That would be a good strategy to remember what you read, and then we'll talk about that in class when you return. Thanks, and I'll see you later.